One of the things I love about construction and about the architecture industry is the amazing projects we get to build. We build unbelievable houses, houses that I never thought we would get to build. It is really an honor to be able to work with the homeowners that we get to work with and to build some of these amazing projects by these incredible architects. Unfortunately, our industry is not filled with very many people who really understand building material science or building science in general. We are often hired by homeowners or architects or even other builders to help them make sure that the materials they're specifying and the way that they're building their houses are not only healthy, but that will last a long time, are fire resilient, are super efficient, and are really good places to build and to live in. And we're often called in to research and clear building materials that are specified by engineers or mechanical engineers or architects or homeowners or even builders and to make sure that those materials are healthy, are not toxic, and are not gonna make it an unhealthy space for people to live in. And one of these consultants brought to us a material that was to be used to dampen sound on the inside of ducts. And this is what we found. One of the builders that I consult for wanted to put this material inside the ducts, and he asked us if it was okay. And what we see is that we go to the website describing this material and we look at the material. Now, firstly, as I've talked about in previous videos, we want to look at what the manufacturer says. In here, they're making that they first of all admit that it's a PVC based liner. And as we've talked about in previous videos, we hate PVC. PVC polyvinyl chloride is a really bad material because it off gases dioxin when it combusts. It also off gases dioxin when they're making it, which means it's not only bad for homeowners that are living in houses, it's bad for firefighters that are trying to put out those houses on fire. And that's what we're seeing with the firefighters in LA after the Palisades and the Altadena fires is these guys are being exposed to toxic chemicals. But we also know that when dioxin is produced from burning vinyl, the particulates of that dioxin can attach to dust, that PM 2.5 dust particle, which is super, super small and can actually get into our lungs and in between our cells and into our bloodstream and cause all kinds of health related illnesses. But those little tiny particles can float for miles and miles. So it's not just the neighbors of that house that are getting poisoned by those dioxin and that PM 2.5. It's people miles away and potentially over a month those particles can stay airborne before they land and somebody eats them on their food or breathes them in in their lungs. And so we don't want to use PVC at all. We get rid of it out of all of our projects. The only place we'll find PVC is around the Romex, the wire that we put into our houses. And unfortunately, there is no commercially available substitute for vinyl coated wire. And so we're kind of stuck with it, but we're minimizing it as much as we can. Now, we're also seeing that this manufacturer is claiming that this is an environmentally friendly duct liner and that it's free of CFCs or HFCs, so chlorofluorocarbons, hydrofluorocarbons, hydrochlorofluorocarbons, and PBDEs. These are all chemicals that are known to be toxic chemicals. They're bad for the ozone layer. They're bad for global warming. It's also stating that it's formaldehyde and fiber free. So fiber, they're in this respect, they're not talking about asbestos, which has been illegal. They're talking about fiberglass fibers, and that can cause irritation in the lungs. So that's all great, right? No formaldehyde. Does that mean it's a safe material? Unfortunately, it doesn't. It doesn't mean it's a safe material because we don't know what's actually in this material. It could have plutonium or cyanide, or it could give off a toxic gas. We can't tell that because they're not going to put that in their marketing materials. They're going to put that in their SDS or so we think. So we're also going to look at what other claims they're making. And they're saying they use an EPA registered antimicrobial agent. So what we found in the science is that antimicrobial agents like in soaps and things actually don't do anything better to kill the bacteria on our hands than the soaps themselves do. And we know that when we have antimicrobial agents on surfaces, whether it's a countertop or in these ducts, what we're actually doing is we're challenging the bacteria that end up in those ducts to this antimicrobial surface and it kills 99% of them, but the 1% it doesn't kill become resistant to that bacteria. And what that causes is antibiotic resistant bacteria, staph or other MRSA type bacterium, which are no longer responsive to the antibiotics we use for people that get sick, which means we're making super bacteria by using materials like this. 
Again, a really bad idea. It's also stating that it'll protect us from mold, fungal growth, and bacterial growth. So mold and fungus are really difficult because they have a cellular structure that's very similar to humans and other multicellular organisms. And what we find is that the things that kill mold often kill us. And in fact, we call them biocides for bio meaning living and side meaning to kill. So these biocides, they're saying potentially that they're putting these biocides in this duct in liner material. And we're gonna look at the SDS for this material. And we see that this manufacturer does what many manufacturers do, is they hide what they're gonna put into their materials or what they've put into their materials through two typical ways. One, they call it an article, which means that it's a material that goes in installed. It's not a liquid, it's not a paste, it's not a spray can, it's not something like that. It's an article like a mouse or a piece of paper, right? And so what that says is that they don't have to declare what the chemicals are in that material. Well, why the hell did they put in SDS to begin with? Secondly, they often state that they're proprietary chemicals and that they're not gonna tell you because they don't wanna give away their private industry secrets and have somebody else replicate their material. So you're left guessing what's in that material. And if you guess, oh, there's, everything's okay, then you're taking your life and or the life of your family or your clients into your own hands. I don't accept that. That's a really bad decision to make. So we wanna look farther down in the SDS to see if they're giving away clues as to what's actually in this material. And what we see is that they're admitting that they have polyvinyl chloride in here. And if you look up poly polyvinyl chloride, it's a carcinogen and cost toxic. They're also saying that the decomposition products of this material in fire are hydrochloric acid, HCl, hydrogen cyanide, HCN, and other hazardous gases may be evolved. That doesn't sound like a safe material to me. That actually sounds like a really unsafe material to me. I'm not gonna choose to put that into our projects. Not only does it keep me from being able to clean the ducts, but it's potentially off-gassing toxic chemicals into the houses that I'm building for my clients or my own house. What are our options? Do we just have to deal with loud furnace systems? Of course not, there's options and there's much better options. For instance, we could use natural silencers that are designed by mechanical engineers that are just structural silencers. So instead of the sound just going right through the ducts, the sound is converted to heat in a dissipative silencer, or it's a reactive silencer in that it bounces the sound around and it essentially ablates itself, reducing the sound. There's film line silencers, there's mold block. There's all these different types of silencers that are designed to reduce sound, different high frequency sound and low frequency sound. So we don't have to use any toxic chemicals. We don't have to use something that keeps us from cleaning our heating and cooling systems. We can use design silencers. Now, the common refrain is, well, those are expensive or those take up a lot of space. So design the house or design the system to take account for this space that these are required. And if you ever ask a person that's sick what they would pay to not be sick, it's generally everything. And so why would we then then go into this conversation saying, well, we could do this thing and not include these toxic chemicals, but it's gonna cost more. Well, people are always gonna wanna protect their health. And if you can make the case that these do an adequate or a great job of reducing sound without poisoning them, most likely people are gonna take you up on that. This is just a really no-brainer decision. We need to design houses and buildings so that we can use these non-toxic solutions to problems that we have in these buildings because we don't have to take the risk of adding toxic chemicals if we don't need to. If you're interested in learning more about building science, please hit subscribe as we show you how to build a better way.